for your first couple weeks, first couple months on the banking committee? Mm -hmm. Like, what are your priorities going to be I'm, there? I'm really excited about this appointment, and it's not just about the fact that I was appointed, but that we have really had a cohort of progressives capture the Financial Services Committee. This is really exciting because for so long Wall Street captured it and they were in charge of really, you know, regulating themselves, which we know what happened as a result of that. So I've, I've talked with other members about digging into the student loan crisis, about uh, digging into for-profit ICE detention, about digging into uh, any potential violations with, with uh, building out fossil fuel pipelines and more. What Ocasio-Cortez means there about a progressive takeover of the Financial Services Committee is that she's not the only one that got put on the panel just this week. You also had Tulsi Gabbard added to the committee, Rashida Tlaib added, as well as Ayanna Presley. That gives you, you know, four new progressive members of the banking committee working under the direction of Chairman Maxine Waters from Los Angeles. And so this is not your grandfather's banking committee anymore. The banking committee for years was known as kind of a sleepy place where if you were a, a centrist or conservative Democrat, you could go there, you wouldn't get noticed much, and you could raise an absolute fortune from Wall Street. All you'd have to do is work on a couple of loopholes, do a little bit of uh, deregulation, but it was also complicated that Nobody, nobody was going to raise much of a stink about it. So it was basically easy money, and you barely even had to show up to the hearings. Just vote this way, and you're in good shape. That all started to change first with the financial crisis when people realized that all of a sudden that actually bank legislation does matter. Wall Street deregulation does matter. You know, They brought the global economy to a screeching halt and produced the Great Recession. And so in the cycles after that, as they started to try to unwind banking regulation again, Democrats started getting pressure from the left. And so now Democrats have been telling leadership, you know what, the House Financial Services Committee isn't that useful to me anymore. Find me somewhere else that I can go where I can raise a lot of money that won't get me tarred as some type of a neoliberal Wall Street sellout. And so all of a sudden, they had they had seats available. And, and here comes... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, Tulsi Gabbard, and Ayanna Presley available to take those seats. And what that means for the first time in modern history, you're going to have progressives who actually want to regulate Wall Street on the banking committee. Crazy as that sounds, we haven't had anything like that since probably the 1930s. What surprised people about the ability of these insurgents to get onto this committee is that you're supposed to sort of buy your way on there. In Washington, they have something called dues. And the amount of dues that you owe to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee depends on the committee that you sit on. And this is written down. You know, the, 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 the precise amount that you owe for each committee depends on the power that the committee has over a particular industry. So if you're on the Ways and Means Committee, which is taxation, it has jurisdiction over effectively every industry in the United States, then you're going to owe the highest amount of dues. That might be $250,000 to get on at the lower level. If you become a subcommittee chair, then your dues go up. If you're the committee chair, your dues are that much greater. And so Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez told me that when she met with leaders of the DCCC, they said, you know, if you want to get on some of these big committees, you're going to have to pay dues. And she said, well, I'm raising money through my email list for other Democrats. Does that count? And they said, no, uh, that currently that does not count. Now, my understanding is that they are rethinking this and that they, they may start to reevaluate what kind of money they count towards paying dues. And Ocasio-Cortez walked out of that meeting thinking, well, I, I guess I'm not getting on any of these powerful committees because she wasn't committing uh, to paying dues to the to the DCCC, which had just spent the year kind of going after the type of candidates that she was supporting. But the, the notion that she and the others were able to get on the committee shows that the party is actually starting to rethink how it uh, comports itself to this new energy. What it shows is that they're beginning to pay attention that there's a new force that they're going to have to grapple with.